on this clip you just you see some good pressure that leads to our winning the ball um, then we work the ball around to through the midfield um, patient build up all the way through and then uh, look to attack the wings Right, we're on to the ball. We have a lot of a number of players pressing the ball. We end, we end up winning it. We play negative, which is good just to reset. It's great space. Um, work back to the keeper to stretch them out. You know, both center backs are wide facing up the field. And we got good positioning um, from our you know our back four plus our, our six. You know, patient play. Probably could switch to Jake here, but you know he's got a little bit of pressure, so we keep it. And Cam does a good job of working to the inside, and Abel finds a good spot in underneath all of the forwards, and we're able to switch out through Tyler. It's a good ball into Tyler here. All right, this is where I would think, you know, into the forward, let's lay it off to somebody who can see the field um, instead of trying to turn, even though the turn is on. All right, I'd probably want, you know, the reason why, you know, I'm asking for the ball to be laid off is because in this case, Jack's now able to run at the back three, maybe slip a ball into to, uh, Billy. Find Ethan to this side of the field and uh, or and find Daniel, um, but by you know taking a little couple extra touches here to turn, you know if he had, had he had turned, you know had Yassin turned um, initially just on the turn right there, yeah he would have been able to do the same exact thing. He would have been able to turn and find Billy, you know for example, but it takes a second or two for him to turn, you know and then the space is kind of closed off, you know from our initially you know being able to break their pressure. This is a, one of those situations where. Uh, we've broken pressure. We need to exploit the fact that you know you don't have anybody on you. Uh, the midfielders are running off you now. That, you know now they're taken out of the play because you had to turn back. Um, but still decent play. We laid off to the number uh, able here. And we're, you know good play into Billy, and we're looking to spring Tyler, which is you know a common play for us that players are looking to get in beyond. So overall, you know defense to offense, possession out of the back. You know switch your point of attack, break the midfield pressure. You know, all those concepts are things that we're looking to do just in the decisive moments. Can we be a little bit quicker, a little bit, uh, uh, again, decisive when the ball comes in to Yassine? Can he quickly just lay the ball off to oncoming players and then allow them to see the field and go? Um, and if he can't, then can he turn quicker to find the weak side of the ball? Because we worked the ball from one side to the next, and I think we had an opportunity probably there to break them down had we moved the ball a little bit quicker. Um, in this clip, you'll see a good possession again out of the back, leading to a good attack for us, in one of our typical um, wing attacks. So Rafael lets the ball roll, um, you know, patient, sees the pressure, uses the keeper, which is good. We get into our starting positions. I think we can do a, a little bit better job of probably sprinting to our starting positions and opening your body up. But the pressure isn't you know that tough from them. But you could have gotten caught here, right? As you're not looking here, this player could have changed his his pace, you know, his his pressure. And, you know, being able to see the field, getting yourself in the open position to see the field would have, you know, helps you, you know, get out of any pressure that might have changed once you turned your back. And so, you know, you know we do a good job of, of being patient. And look, Ethan's in a great spot underneath the player, players, underneath their midfield. They're all stretched out trying to win the ball, not doing a great job, and they were able to break pressure and attack. Now, this is, again, our prototypical, you know, attack. We have one, two, and I think, you know, Daniel's out here on the left, three, Four players attacking the near space, and typically three, to, two to three players attacking the, the the weak space. And again, you'll see that this is the gap that is wide open for us to attack. You know, if we can't attack in the near side, you, you'll see, these are both the center backs. You've seen is basically drawing both of them. Um, there's possibly an opportunity here instead of looking to run in behind. You've seen of just posting up. And again, I, there's a couple instances in other games where you know most of your runs are looking to get in behind. Um, what I, you know, sometimes you just need to stand in a gap, right, and be a, a player to play off of, um, or to bounce a ball, you know, bounce a ball through. So it's you go into you, out to Daniel, into you, back to Ethan. Then he can drive across into this space, right? I think, you know, just giving you one idea, you play a ball into your scene and run on the inside because you know these players are out of the play basically. You play in, you run off of it, and we do this somewhat when we warm up. Is that when this ball comes back, then Yassine is looking to, to break and spin out, and you can decide either to play Billy, dribble yourself, or slip a ball to Yassine. Um, and I think it's just too tight for you know for us to try and play here, and the space gets closed down because we don't recognize you know the secondary spaces and what we want to attack is, which is you know in this area we're looking you know the direct area where most of the runs are going right now, 
um, to attack. We end up having to, and this is a good idea, right? A oh, first time ball, I think if you played this, you know, possibly with your left foot, you might've gotten through. The defense does a good job here of, of, of closing that, that passing lane down. You know, you can see that Cam is looking to get in beyond you. Um, but look, it's just our normal diamond here. We were talking about this yesterday, the different diamonds that exist between our front seven, really, if you can include the outside backs. Um, here's this side of, you know, this is the diamond on this side, the attacking midfielder, the forward, the winger, and the outside back. And on the opposite side are the three players, the attacking midfielder, the, the outside winger, our number seven, um, and then our outside back looking to attack the weak side space. And you can see, you know, maybe Jack or Billy can, can work in this space here late and we can get a ball in. But I think if you rewind it, there was a small opportunity to cut across this, right? They're set up now to try and stop this type of pass, right? This defender's coming to press you. I think Yassine just stands in a gap here, right? And presents himself as a wall pass. You might be able to, what I would call a ladder pass. You play it and basically lay it right back into the person who just gave it to you. And, you know, not going really around a player, so it's just a straight pass in and back. And then Ethan's able to advance the ball quicker because, you know, the ball moves faster than you can run and run into that space. And now he can attack this spaces over here. So you'll see a number of these examples, again, where we're set up to attack the near side, but the weak side is where, you know, the runs. And you'll actually, a goal comes from that in the second half. Um, here you'll see just a number of sequences here, again, of, of us attacking. Uh, we, we win the ball, you know, probably less touches to try to do this, but the idea is that, you know, we want to get the ball out of the area that we just won the ball, right? They have number of numbers around it. Let's get the ball behind. Let's go backwards and sideways to get out of pressure. We do a good job of that. Again, it's taken probably too many touches to do the, to do those type of passes here. I think we could do it in less. Um, it's a little slow, right? Can we find a one touch pass? And one of the areas I think we need to do a better job, you know, you know, Garrett's out for these, this game and the, in the previous game is that, as the ball is going to these outs, you know, our, our backs, we need a player in a position to be able to bounce a pass to at all times, right? Almost every single time you should be in a situation, number six should be in place, right? Probably now he should be work, you know, Ethan should be working in here so you get the ball from Tony. Um, need to be, need to show up in those gaps trying to find the ball. And I think this isn't helping, right? Standing next to your defender um, and being in a space that isn't able to help these guys get out isn't great, but I think we also had an opportunity here if we just talk, you know, this goes to just the play of just playing quicker. Can this ball go one time back to Tony if he needed to? It takes one, two, so it goes two touches, and here Tony needs to receive across his body. Now he's using his dominant foot, but Raphael, you know, and Cam are open to this side of the field, and if we talk, I think we get out of this situation. The defender is, what, 18 yards away or 12 yards away? There's enough time to receive this ball across the body, and as we do that, Ethan can come in here we open up the space a little bit more. If we need to play Ethan out to Raphael, we can, or if we can play Raphael directly. We just need to receive the ball across our body there. And basically, we're playing ourselves into trouble here. Now, anytime we're playing a pass to somebody and they're facing our own goal in a corner, there's not much you can do in the situations, right, with the ball. You have to turn up field to do anything, right? And Jake, you know, you can see Ethan kind of pointing. There's a number of times here we've, we've highlighted in videos where you know, Jake probably could play back, but he's, you know, he's focused on the ball or on the pressure. You know, not enough information for him, but he does a good job of escaping it, right? And we're able to get out. You know, a good long ball into our four. Again, this is one of those situations, again, from the previous clips, you can see Yassine is working in a good spot in between the lines. Just a one-touch pass. Boom, boom, boom. And we're out. One touch to Jack, one touch to Abel, one touch to Daniel. If all three of these players are seeing that type of pattern, I think we get out quicker. And now it takes a second here. They're able to recover. You know, the ball is great here. This is actually, you know, pretty good. The ball would have gotten to this position had, you know, had we played the passing pattern that I initially uh, described. But we do a good job of at least switching to point of attack. We don't attack the same side. Little reverse pass here, which is great. And now Abel, or now actually Daniel is into space. And it's just, this is the moment. We've had a few of these. These are hard passes to make. We've had a few of these where we're running in on the back four. Um, and we have, num we don't have numbers per se, but we have space to attack. And it's this split second, right, right around here where you'd have to lob a pass. You'd have to recognize when, you know, they're they're set up. We don't have anybody in front of the play. And one of the one of the clips in the FC Monco, you know, you seen or I think Mike was in, in a spot where Daniel was running in the back four, and I said, Mike, you know, somebody needs to stop and just be a post up and, and allow them to play a give and go. But in this situation, there isn't that. Everyone's behind the ball. They have four players back, um, and you'll notice here at this split second that this player steps up. There's an opportunity possibly to play in a ball, a lob pass to Abel from here. 
into this space because there's enough space here, right? They're not set up. They're set up basically on a one and a three, and the gaps in here are what we want to attack. So as this ball, you know, as this play, is, it happens split second, right? I know, you know it's tough to do these on the fly, but you know that Abel is running in behind you because he just passed you. You turn, and that's the ball right around here that you could probably lob a pass into space, um, and he would be in on goal because there's enough space for you to play that ball. Now it ends up being having to turn backwards, and they're able to win the ball from us. We're not able to take advantage of the, the break. So two different things there. Really, it's you know danger out of the back. We need to make sure we're doing a better, much better job of passing, making sure we're not passing ourselves into trouble. Right, receiving across our body, playing, seeing both sides of the field, doing a good, better job of communicating that players are open away from the away from the pressure. A lot of times, players on the ball who are getting pressed, you know, don't see that. So we need to do a better job of helping them see that the switch is on for us to play. As long as we can do it, you know, you know, as long as it's safe. And you know, in this situation that we saw previously when we're playing in the corner, I think we just need to release the ball probably instead of playing a pass by Tony you know, back to Jake. He doesn't have much time here, right? He's being pressed as well. I think we just need to make a better decision probably just to lump this up the field. Once we decide that we're not going to the left, you know, there's not much option here to play short. And I think we need, again, I, I was pointing out earlier, we need to do a better job of the six to get himself in a position. Ethan needs to do a better job of getting in a position to help these players, right? As Tyler gets the ball, there's probably an opportunity to receive it underneath this player. Jake can do a better job of, of supporting it, but it goes back to, to Tony. And, you know, there's an opportunity here to clear it. We don't. We have to move to the other side of the field. And this is where it's dangerous for us to play into our own corner with players running back, right? Uh, we do a good job here. And, you know, Jake recovers. I had a small opportunity, again, to play away from the pressure. These are their two of their forwards. So, you know, there's only one player on this half of the field, you know. And I think better communication, we get the ball to the other side of the field. It's a little bit dangerous because he's actually in, pinched in. So, Tony would have to come out, you know, out here to receive the ball. Uh, at the corner of the six, which you know he's allowed to do and, and should, and this clear a ball upfield, um, we you know he does, does a good job of getting out, and it's in this moment where we decide to break pressure. This is the key, crucial moments when we're attacking. We broke the midfield pressure. You know they're pressing. We get out. They're in gaps, right? There's those large spaces to play, and it's just this one touch passing that gets us out of this stuff, right? Quicker, gets us attacking quicker, and I think still a good play overall. We probably had an opportunity even after all of that, and this moment excuse me, um, to to lob a ball into space. And that's one of those things I want to add to our game. From our Anybody in this situation running at the back four should look for that lob type pass where you're just chipping a ball into space and allowing a player to run onto it. So in this clip, we're you know on a goal kick. And I like this setup where uh, Rafael looks like he's going to hit the ball long, but then he, he drops out to the box. You know, something most teams won't expect, but I think we can definitely use that. Now, a long ball out of the back, again, we, we want to be able to play intelligently. We want to be able to play into space or find a target. Um, and in this case, we, we don't necessarily hit a good ball. I think he's trying to measure a ball to Daniel, um, but it's under hit. They win the first ball and the second ball. But luckily, fortunately for us, you know, they're trying to flick the ball on. We end up winning it. I um, just want to rewind because it's, it's also on for us as this plays to play to the other side of the field. I mean, there's no one over here. And I'll, I'll slightly get it, advance it here. Look, look at all of this space that we can play. You know, Rafael could go to Tony or to Jake directly. We can play out the other side of the field um, and get the ball to our attack, you know, our, our defensive midfield, which is really the goal of us playing out of the back is can we work the ball through six? Can we get the ball to a player in the midfield who can turn upfield and attack the lines? And then their job is obviously to find the attacking midfielders or the forwards um, on the other side of the midfield. Uh, so that they can attack the back four. And that's really how the, the progression should happen, is that we're looking, if it's on for us to play short and play eat, you know, play through the pressure, let's do it. Um, this type of ball doesn't help us, right? They're winning the first ball easily without any pressure. Um, they're able to flick it on, but fortunately, we, you know, we pick up the pieces here. I think just a little bit quicker decision-making, but yeah, we have time. He's able to dribble. His player can't keep up with him. Again, you're, you're not going to necessarily have this type of time and space, you know, Against Manhattan, for you know, especially, I think they did a good job of pressing us when we were playing this type of ball, these type of balls we were dribbling. If you remember San Jose or San Diego, they don't let you dribble like this in the midfield. You know, these this team SDA probably wasn't physically we outmatched them physically in the midfield, but you know they were still smart players. But you can tell Ethan's head and shoulders above this player, um, 
and he's not you know Ethan's not the biggest kid and Jack is 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 a good size on on both of these players as well so and they give you time and space to play right end up I think going out of bounds here just got to move the ball quicker one one touch two touch not trying to hold the ball for long periods of time because again and remember if the 17s or in last last year in national league or nationals um the, the they're going to be pressing they have the physical players to, the players who have physical ability to do it um they can read the game faster just can't take these long t- dribbling uh moments in the game and expect to get away from it and you can and you'll notice here even in this situation one of their better players one of their more physical players catches jack Right, and it, this is unacceptable because now it's a one v one or one v two. I think Rafael's still here, but now they're breaking in. We cannot lose the ball in this area of the field, the middle third, because that's where teams will break us down. And I think what you see here is I think Jack was probably looking to play a long ball and decided, you know, maybe it wasn't sa- a safe ball when he easily could have just passed. If you're thinking in one touch or two touches, right, receive it and play Ethan. And out to Abel. That's our job. Like for the midfielders, you know where your other two midfielders are at all times. Know who, where, if you're you know, receiving the ball, where Abel is. Know where your attacking options are. Um, and this is you can see Ethan looking to the next pass. Right, he's doing it. He's doing his job. You need to get the ball to him and play out there. And I think I even I think I might have said something. You know, Billy's on. He was on. He's in this space right here. You can lump a ball into you know drop a ball in here and you know Abel and then Tyler can get the ball. But I think it just takes too long to to do it. And you're getting pressed. And this is what I meant by earlier is that the play has to be quicker because the players that we'll be playing against are going to be faster and understand the game better. And everything we do has to be, you know, that much quicker. So you can just see that what happens here when it when we don't play quickly and they're off to the races. We end up stopping the play, but it's a dangerous 2v2 situation. On this clip, we'll see a good counterattack by us off of their corner kick. So good, you know, we good, good, do a good job of winning the first ball. Abel does. There, an outlet pass, first time ball from Billy, which is good, right? Gets us out of pressure. Um, Daniel does a good job here of receiving and holding the ball up for us, not getting, losing the ball and drawing pressure, realizing he can't keep going, cutting the ball back, receiving and playing across the field, which is what we're looking for. Again, you know, this, we get a little bit fortunate here, but I think Jack could probably play this ball first time right there in the cam or Yassin, end up trying to play cam, but it gets hit into Yassin's path. And I was, you know, as I saw this the first time, I was thinking, or at least live, I was thinking across is a perfect type of ball, right? And a little bit higher, it probably would have been a good ball. And I, as I watched it on the film, you know, to me, shooting from this angle isn't a bad option as well. You know, it, it, it would seem the goalkeeper is way off, you know, off to the side. And I, you know, Yassine is going to have one later on where he ends up passing just maybe a yard or two on the inside. But for me, you're you know a strong left-footed player should be driving this ball to the far post. Can be you know you can as an option, um, and I think uh, you know we need to look for those opportunities to shoot. I think you know, if you remember from the FC Monco game, Jack as well had a ball in this area, and if you're to me that the shooting range for most of us, for a lot of us, is basically where Cam is. You know, if you draw a line out around the box, that is basically where you can shoot the ball, and, and it doesn't have to necessarily score itself. You hit a ball to the back post. He's diving to try to save it. You know, he's not going to get a, his full extension and be able to catch it usually. The ball is going to be deflected into an area where we can pick up the pieces and try to tap the ball in. In the end, it's not a bad cross, um, but I think as he received this ball, a first touch on an angle towards the goal in this direction, right, being a more aggressive yourself and being a little more selfish would have set you up for a shot uh, to the far post. So I just wanted you to, to see that. In the end, it's a good cross, by the way. I mean, it's, it's a decent cross. It's dangerous. Um, we didn't have anybody in the box. Possibly could have gotten there earlier. Uh, a little bit harder running by maybe Daniel or Yassine. Um, but in the end, it's a good counterattack play, and we nearly get a, a goal out of it. And it works the ball back towards our own end. And it gets sloppy and a bit too casual. The first thing here I'll notice is that it takes one, two, three, three, four pass touches to do what could be done in one. Right, the ball comes into you on this throw. There is no pressure. That should just be a one touch back to, back to Tyler. Right, you're not trying to turn. You're trying to settle the ball and play. Um, you know, maybe the touch is what causes it causes you to um, take extra touches. But in my opinion, um, you shouldn't need to trap that ball anyways. Right, you just play the ball right back to Tyler. Tyler plays it back to Jake. 
I think we are out of out to the other side of the field. You know, one of the things that we'll, you're gonna we're gonna experience in these situations is that at this type of touch is what gets you hit, right? This is the type of touch that players are feeding off of. They're looking for, you know, somebody takes a bad touch in a game when I'm playing, I'm gonna go after that ball because that's your, you know that's the opportunity to really go after it because they don't have control of it. Um, they can't. They're they're focused on the ball, and this is where you get stripped a lot of times. Now, players can get stripped a lot of times on these situations where they're taking a bad touch uh, when they should have just taken one to get it out of there. So we work the ball back, All right? Deep, good spots here, right? We could probably play in and out if we wanted to, or in and out to the wide spot. So we, you know, a good triangle here. Probably could work the ball even if you know if we worked a little bit harder to get into this gap. Probably work the ball here to Jack, right across the field. We, you've seen that a number of times in our play. Just a little casual here. It's just too casual, right? Raphael's not looking to play forward. Again, if, if we had, Ethan was in a spot underneath it, he probably could have now been here for Raphael, but he's not looking forward. I and mean, I think he doesn't recognize an easy pass forward. And I think this is just too casual and too dangerous to do at our, in our six yard box, right? We end up getting out, but again, this is there's no need to take a, a touch, touch here because this, this touch nearly loses you the ball, right? You get lucky, really. Right, we should be playing a first-time ball to Cam. That's the angle that's open. Give it to him. Now, just a bad touch. And now I'll highlight one thing that we cannot do: never, ever give him the ball. Because look what you just done. You've now created a situation where now we have to recover and we're not ready and set up. If anything, roll the ball back behind you, or just leave it. Right? There's no never a situation where it, unless we you know we're down or we're having to chase the game or giving them the ball to. You know, so they can speed up play, but in this situation, you know we're defending. So there's no situation where I say we're defending where we want to just give them the ball um, when we're not set because that you know this is an opportunity. If this kid kid had a long throw, right, you know decent throw into our forward. Now we're having to defend in our own box. So that's another area that we need to improve upon. Right, they're able to get some something out of it because we weren't set up defensively and we gave them the ball. A decent play here to try to get out. Or work the ball around. I think we could do a better job, you know, using Tony here, right, to go out through Jake. I'm not, you know, I'm not exactly sure what's going on on the other side of the field, but there is space for him to get the ball. But again, I'm not sure if he's, you know, under, you know, realizing it, recognizing it. It's tight, right? One, two, three players here. There's not great angles to play. Um, Ethan doesn't look like he's, you know, has a good passing angle here uh, to receive it. Possibly looking long in this situation is the option. Right, we're losing the ball in our own air. We get a little bit lucky, but they call a foul because he's playing on the ground. I think we just need to play quicker, as you can see, you kind of see me saying. We need, we need to think through the situation a little bit faster. Can't be so casual because we have to understand the urgency. If we lose the ball here, this is a dangerous opportunity. We need to move. We don't want to panic. We don't want to make you know play tight, but we want to move the ball quickly. Right, make quick decisions and talk to each other. And that's everyone needs to be engaged here. Right, it's just too casual. Players aren't moving for each other when we play. Right, you're standing in the same exact spot as you were, um, Raphael. Right, and this is a tough ball. Right, unless you hit this perfectly, Cam. This is a tough ball to give to to Jack. Right, Jack really has to seal him off, and you know it was there for maybe to bounce it to Jack back to Raphael, but the defenders, you know, win the ball. He's on the ground. They get a free kick, and from this, they get one of their best chances of the game. You know, besides the one at the end. You know, this is a dangerous situation. Only as you notice, we have somebody in the space here now at all times uh, trying to block any ball on the ground. Um, and this is very dangerous, as you can see. Both All players are pretty good, doing a pretty good job of marking up, but that ball skipped off of their head and just missed the back post. And as we rewind it again, see the marks. Abel's a little bit behind his player. You know, it's a challenge between Jake and his guy. 50-50 chance of winning it. He ends up flicking it. Um... You know, had this ball been on frame and Tony saved it, I think their players would have been in a better position. Because look, you know, this player is probably the closest to being had seen had run all the way through and hadn't stopped. Whereas our players, you know, Raphael in this case, you know, didn't follow it all the way through. Um, so he's got to, you know, you've seen a number of these free kicks, especially the TSF videos, where on these set pieces are dangerous if we don't do a good job of pinning down our 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 forwards, making sure they can't run by us easily, 
um, challenging for the ball and then seeing it through all the way to the very end, not giving up on the play until it's been cleared exact, you know, completely. So that's, I mean, it just missed the post. I mean, that's a goal almost, right, for them. So we got a little bit lucky there. And their chances created purely, and most teams, when their chances are created, are it's because our possession out of the back is at times shaky, right? And we need to do a better job of communicating between each of the players on the back, making sure every player is engaged at all times, looking for space, being able to play. And you'll notice as you watch these films, there's, there's opportunities for us to get out every single time. It's not like the pressing is good or, or impossible to get through. And if it, you know, if it is, if you feel like it's too tight, then, then that's where we release the ball in the field and just relieve pressure by you know hitting it long. But in most of these situations that I'm showing, and just about all the games that we play, we're giving the ball away cheaply. We're giving the ball away with unforced errors. We're giving the ball away in situations where their players are open who aren't talking. Um, and we don't see the field well. We don't see the pressure well. And I think we can do a better job here preventing this type of situation where we give up a free kick because we're just sloppy out of the back. Um, in this sequence, you'll see that we get two you know very good shots on goal. Um, or at least two attempts on goal that should be goals. Um, so I'll just let it run through. Good, good defend, defending here. Can we be a bit quicker with our passing? Just give it to the player who can see the field better. That allows us to move the ball quickly. We try to set a pass here um, to the scene that gets cut out, right? And now we're off off the races. Dano does a good job of attacking attacking the spaces. I think you know we often need to attack, which is that weak angle or that weak space across the field, which is good. And he has a reverse pass here to Yassine. And like same as Cam, right? This is a tap into the back post. I mean, this you, Tam, Cam was probably maybe a two yards out wider. Um, the, you know, the keeper was a bit in, but it's the same type of shot. Just hit it to the back post, and it's a goal. He opts here to try to square the ball back across the goal, thinking that it's, there's a runner in there. You know, and I don't fault him for you know passing because you know a lot of times. An extra pass is needed, but in this case, I mean, the goalkeeper is so out of position. And this is one of the things as a forward you have to recognize, right? When the keeper is out of position, he's, he should be a little bit more central, you know, probably in here as he's coming out towards you. And that would have been a harder shot. You know, he might have to hit upper 90 to near post or, you know, try to squeeze the ball between him to the back post. But to me, this is, uh, you could easily just have passed this to the back post. And that would have been a goal. All right, so the ball does come back out. Um, and we get another chance here. Work the ball from the wide zone. We get the ball person who can see the field better than, you know, Cam does a good job here of giving the ball to Jack instead of trying to turn and play himself. You know, Jack's faced up, works to the inside, which, you know, where this is where no cover is, so that's not a bad ball. He probably easily, you know, easily can play. I think this is Abel or maybe Daniel. Yeah, I don't know, you've seen actually. You know, you could probably pass here out of here and, and get a good cross, but, you know, we do a decent job here of just trying to get it back in the box. You know, a bit more effort here. To seal the defender, you know, if you want to score goals, sticking in a foot, and I, I get on Daniel sometimes for this, just sticking in a foot here isn't going to do it, right? If he's sealing his defender and running and, and running to the spot where the ball is and getting his body in there, I think he can post the defender up, push the defender out of the way. I think he's strong enough to do that that type of stuff um, and get his body, its body position, not not your foot that needs to be there. It's it's really not a leg. I think he has just the same amount of chance to get to this ball as the defender. Right, basically the same, but I think the defender just is committed more to get to it. He can put a foot in because, right, he's just trying to hope to poke the ball. But we need to get a body in there. Um, they do a good, we do a good job of picking up the pieces here. You know, Billy's trying to find a ball, and this is probably one of the best passes I've seen in a while uh, from Abel. Right, the vision here. I'm not even sure how he saw you seen uh, the vision here to fake this shot and then just tap a ball into space for him. You seen to run onto. While there's pressure coming at you, as you can see, is excellent, right? And you've seen he's in on goal, and all we have to do is put this to the corner, one of the corners. He hit, I think he hit it right, you know, hit it basically right at him. Keeper makes a good save, and we're not able to score. They clear their lines. We keep pressure on by good positioning by the backs. Good interplay here to get underneath. Good ball right here by Jack. And it's just, you know, quicker service here possibly gets us in the box. You know, it's not his natural foot to, to serve this ball, but it's the right idea. You know, get a ball in the box, get a runner across the goalkeeper. I think this is, um, you see, right, running across the goal, get a good service. You don't need to necessarily look up. That's probably the one thing I would say. A lot of our service uh, from a wide position, you don't need to look. Just hit it, right? 
I think that extra look and that extra touch probably cost you a second or two, a half a second. But in the end, it's a good overall sequence of plays where we had a number of shots on goal, good service into the box, and opportunities to score. Um, another sequence here out of the back, a um, couple different sequences actually, um, we're playing, which leads to a shot for them on goal. And here's the tough thing about this play, you know, as this forward's coming to press, you know, Tyler's running away from the field. It isn't necessarily in a position to receive this pass and see the ball forward without taking it, you know, without having to take at least a touch. And that's that's what causes this, you know, this to be a t difficult play because the defender, or the forward in this case, is able to press him immediately. Now, in this case, could Tony have worked maybe into this gap over here uh, and gotten the ball one time back? Since you know we want players to play the way they're facing, and if he's facing this direction, he usually he needs an option in that direction, right? To turn up field here with pressure is very risky, and you'll see what happens is he gets caught, the ball caught. We're not able to play out. They win the first ball, knock the ball one touch, one touch, and then get a good shot on goal. You know. This is to the back post, or you know, the guy gets a, hits a screamer, and we're having to you know pick it out of the net. So it's got to be a little bit safer out of the back there, and recognizing when players aren't in a good spot, especially if they're facing your own goal, um, we need to get numbers, you know, options behind the play, to so that we can play out. Uh, so in this case, when you give the ball to him, uh, Tony, you probably need to move for him to show right if there's no other player in, in that range to, to get the ball back from him. So as the ball, uh, the play continues, long ball, you know, not, you know, looking to get in behind. It's it's good enough to make them retreat and make it hard for them to get a clear header. So it's a, I know it's not a bad play. You know, we've had some issues coming out of the back up, up until this point. So I don't mind that long ball where we can win the ball in their end. Um, good switch. Again, it's one of those situations, and I think I've highlighted this before, where we're not. We need to be looking now. One look. You want two looks, three looks, four looks. It's now, now it's a little too late, right? This is what causes you to, I think, to make a mistake on the touch, right? You're, you're rushed. You're not necessarily, now you have to focus on the pressure, right? And as this goes through, a little bad touch here causes you to have to fight for the ball and be scrappy. Now you do a good job of winning it, right? But I think, you know, against a better player, against a more physical player, I don't think you can, you know, bulldoze your way through. Um, Ethan, uh, so I just need to do a better job of looking. And this is the timing of it. If you, if you know, if you're a midfielder, as this ball, you know, if I could point out those moments, as this ball is here, I mean, this is the time to look. One look. I don't see really is Jack looking for space. He does there. Good. Is Ethan is Abel looking for space? Let me rewind it. Not sure. He's not. He's looking at the ball. He's looking at the ball. He's looking at the ball. He looks a little look there. Jack's looking again. Right. Maybe little looks by Ethan possibly, but the real look. Right, Abel knows his pressure is to his left. He's playing quickly. He plays two touches. Good at receiving. At this point, you know, as the ball is coming from Abel or from Cam, and the vision here, you need to look. One look. He does probably look backwards. Two looks. Three looks. You could have. Those are seconds that you could have taken glances um, to play. And I think the first touch obviously isn't what you wanted. Right now, you have to fight and scrap. And I think we can do a better job with our vision in the midfield and just to see those spaces. And everyone needs to do that actually on the field as well. Good little interplay here. And this is, you know, me being, you know, pushing for that extra really tough angle, like tough passes here as Jack breaks pressure. It's one of those situations earlier where he's running at the back for him. It's just a split second decision here to possibly chip a ball into the space for Billy. I think he uh, does a good job of there finding you seen underneath. I think you've seen turns and shoots. There's an opportunity there slightly for Yassine to possibly play Daniel. So as he got that ball, could he have played a, laid a ball off into space? These are all very tight passes, and I'm, you know, I know, I know, understand it's split second decisions, but we, we can play in tight spaces if the best players need to, right? And that's a good play by Daniel to get the ball to Jack. Good turn, We're running at the back four, and if it's not immediately on for a shot or a through ball, that next type of option is for us to skip a you know chip a ball into space if you can see it. Now it ends up being a decent shot on goal, anyways. Right, not bad, um, and good interplay overall. Uh, this is a sequence of, of attacks here that we we um, we have, and I just want to talk through it as we go as it goes. Um, good interplay here, one touch passing. Um, we work the ball underneath them, 
good positioning by Mike there to receive on the turn, on the half turn, um, to look to attack the back four. Right, we give good numbers around the ball, one, two, three, four. Um, Jets probably a little bit wider than I you know, typically like, but that's fine. We're in a good spot. And here's the opportunity really that's, you know, that I wanted to highlight is that it takes Daniels three, three touches to shoot when it probably could have taken one. Uh, you know, I talked about earlier in some of our clips about just playing within one touch, and that applies to our forwards too, especially when they're in a shooting situation or a shooting position. Now, he does a good job of you know, finding his space, and we get the ball to him. But to me, this is a first-time ball. It's a first-time shot. All right, the ball's rolling to him. It's a good pace. It's on his right foot. You know, he probably had to react a little bit, but it's either two touches or one touch, right? One, two, three. I, you know, I'm not a huge fan of stepping on the ball when you're about to shoot the ball. If he had just received the ball and shot, he might have had a chance to play two touches. You know, one, two, three. That's too many touches to think that at the top of the box against a good team, you're not going to have that time and space to and and to be able to play that slowly. So here's an opportunity really, really where, you know, if we had just been doing this drill in, in uh, practice where I just rolled a ball to him at the top of the box, you know, he would take no hesitation here. It would be no hesitation by him just to shoot that ball first time because there's really no need to take three touches to shoot this ball. It's a perfectly weighted pass, or at least it deflects to him in a way that he can shoot first time. Now, when I watched this the second time or watched this live, I thought, you know, he should shoot first time. And as I rewound it and watched it here on the film, there is an opportunity to slip a ball to Eric, first time ball. Again, it's it's that thinking of being able to play quickly, right? Making decisions, especially in your area around in and around the goal. You just you know the urgency level is going to be high. Players are going to be running at the ball, throwing their bodies at it. You don't you don't necessarily have time uh, to take that many touches um, in the box. So you're in a shooting position. You got to be able to think one touch. Um, but as you see here, there's an opportunity for Eric. You know he thinks he's offside by running backwards, but he's actually very much onside because. You know, there's the player on the back post, and this is Eric here. A little slip pass, you know, one-time ball, and we're in on goal. So let's let it play out. You know, he doesn't get the shot off. Ball gets cycled back. You know, good patient play. Good little ball into the four here by Rafael. You know, he's using the outside of his foot. You know, probably want him to use his left, but he uses the outside of his foot, which is fine by me. Eric is playing on a one-touch again, you know, earlier you know, he's thinking in one touch, a good good play here by him to lay the ball off. You know, Daniel doesn't necessarily attack the spaces. He's, you know, he's looking for options. He's being patient. And this is one of those situations, again, where I was highlighting in the previous video, uh, the vision of players off the ball. And just watch, you know, as this play goes through, there isn't really anybody looking away from the ball as it moves, right? The ball moves from Daniel to, I think, Cam or, no, Dean, sorry, um, and look, none of their eyes are off the ball. Everyone's just looking at the ball. And there's an opportunity here for Eric, I think, to turn. It's quick, and it would have to be a, you know, a tight turn, but the space is behind him, right? He's receiving the ball. If he receives this ball to his left foot, right across his body, and then you know receives and then dribbles with his right foot, protecting it on the outside toward the goal in this direction, the defender is probably going to come and press him, and this is where shielding, you know, as he's dribbling, keeping it on the outside foot, he'd be able to drive into this space. And as he's doing that, he can slip a ball to Jet, he can slip a ball to Mike, and we can attack the goal. But he's square or square to the pass. It isn't sideways on, isn't able to turn. If you remember from Mike earlier, this is the same type of positioning that he had, and he's able to turn, you know, upfield and make a, a good pass. And now it works, get kind of stuck, you know, here, not much to do. And we have, to, you know, we earn a, uh, a throne, which is fine. But we had an opportunity possibly to break them down with some quick play. You know, you notice the positioning, right? The four players in and around on this side of the field. All right, well, now we can attack the other side. There's an opportunity possibly to hit a ball. Ethan's thinking about it, but they're, you know, they retreated, which is a good decision just to keep it. You know, it's not on. Let's work the ball on the other side of the field. Not bad. You know, can we put that ball a bit faster? Excellent ball here. Pinpoint by Raphael, right, right to Mike. Mike's able to play. You know, you see how we're working the ball from side to side, basically from, you know, right side, left side, right side. That's good interplay. You probably need an attacking midfielder in and around here. I think Eric is probably a little bit more advanced. He's probably looking for a long ball. Yeah, he was from Jack, right, as this ball's going to Jack. Could he have hit a ball? Man, it's, you know, it's a tough ball. There's not a ton of space, but that is a space that I want our, our, our attacking midfielders to attack. 
you can see Brendan is joining in with Mike, which is what we look for when the, when the uh, outside fours or the seven or 11 have the ball. We want our two and three, our outside backs, to run off of it. You know, it's not necessarily on for us to play. You know, we keep possession by working the ball back and around. This is what I mean by what happens. When we work the ball negatively, they're going to come out. They're, you know, they're not going to be disciplined and move their line at the same time. There's going to be these gaps where we can play through. And maybe Jet could possibly work in here as Eric is running in behind to, to create some confusion between these three players uh, and possibly get the ball to feet. Um, nothing's on for Jack, so he looks to switch a point of attack. Again, we just got to ping the ball. You know, this is something that will, as we get older, as you guys get better, um, the boss is going to move at a much better pace. You know, you see it's a slow rolling square pass. Nadine can't do much with it, but good first time ball opens up his body. You know, it's not a, the greatest ball. I know I see the idea, but I think Dean and Daniel here are on to play this side. Now we've attacked, you know, the right side, the left side. Now we're, you know, we went to the back to the right side again. Now this is the second time back to the left side. And I think, you know, possibly getting Eric underneath here for a ball that gets the ball out to Daniel and Daniel now can get around. That seems to be the, the normal pattern. Now Mike is asking for the ball and if he, it's, just, it's such a tight ball to play. You're 18 yards. He has 18 yards to put this ball in and the keeper's gonna close that space. They're gonna drop in behind. You probably have a two yard window to drop this ball into space. Um, if anything, you know, ask for a post up, right? Post up on your player, Mike and Jet, right? And ask the ball right to your feet or right to your chest. You know, we're, we, you guys are strong enough to hold your defenders off. This is not a, the space right now for me. You know, if it was where Dean was or where, you know, Eric is, and we're looking for these little, you know, dink balls into the space or little chip balls into the space, then maybe. You know, when, dri when Raphael drives these balls, these are probably more 60, you know, 60-yard 60 balls. We need a lot of space to build, not a room for error, basically. We need a lot of space to build a run onto. So for me, it's either, you know, Eric pulling into space here to create a triangle here with Dean and, and Daniel so we can play out or a ball just into this space right here, you know, or into Mike posting up or Jet posting up so you guys can hold the ball and allow Ethan and Eric or even um, Daniel to run off of it. But this ball that we end up hitting is just too tight. You can see as the ball is getting played in, the keeper would have come out. Look at the, look at the distance between the keeper and this back, uh, the last defender. That ball would have had to bend inch perfect. It's a really tough ball to play. Um, they end up winning the ball. And there are, you know, I think we end up winning the ball from them. But you know that that play basically is over for us uh, with that long ball. So just a couple different options. You see number number different sequences where we work the ball left, you know, right to left, left to right, right to left again. And it's, I think it's the, the pattern of play is good. Um, just wanted to add in, you know, the type of ball that we do play in the end to the forwards. I think has to be a little bit more intelligent. The space is not there for us to work uh, hit that long ball. But we do a decent job of getting our backs into attack, especially on the right-hand side. Brennan's getting up forward. Dean's getting in, in, into attack. And that's good, solid play from us. In this video, you'll see a number of sequences. I'll um, just let it play, and I'll talk through it as we go. You're looking to switch there, but it's not on. All right, good by, by Dean and Daniel here. Good ball into the forward. I, loved, I love the fact that we have a player in space working off. Uh, Mike does a good job here of keeping possession, you know, beating his defender and good uh, ball into wide space. Don't necessarily like the fact, we, you know, it's not best situation to try to take two, two players on, but at least you're working working them a bit. Good service, but no one's there. And we're in good spots to pick up the pieces. Good by Raphael to keep possession for us. You know, good little overlap, but you know, the back heel isn't on because the defender is not sold on the fact that you're not passing, right? It, it looks obvious that you're about to give this ball to Dean. Doesn't necessarily work. Um, he tries to take two players on again, and not not the best decision in terms of percentages. But we try to get through. I don't, you know, every once in a while, I don't mind you taking on players, especially if we're high up the field. And this is where we get ourselves in a little bit of trouble. Um, to throw our play out of the back again, we're running away from the goal. This time we do have time um, to play. You think it receives the ball? Jack's probably on here, but we play it back. And it's this touch here that, you know, costs Tony. I think Rafael needs to do a better job of opening his body and, and asking for this pass. He's wide open, right? You can see even here, Ethan is talking to Tony as his ball comes from him, which is what I'm asking for players to do. Give it to him. Tell him what to do. Um, first touch is okay. Second touch, it's a little, first touch is a little tight, and so it requires you to take a longer first, second touch, and that's what brings the pressure, right? Three touches here isn't, isn't necessary. 
right? One touch to Raphael, boom, we're out. Takes two, takes three, have to play a long ball into space, which is dangerous because they pick up the pieces. Um, we're able to win the ball here. Good job by Brendan, good 1v1 defending, and a ball by Mike to release pressure into space. And it, exactly the same situation here. Jet is in a 1v1, um, but he looks to play backwards. And it's this ball, man, this is the ball that I was, I think Mike has a leg, definitely has a leg to play here to Jack. Right, that ball across the field. And this is the reason why we work the ball to the other side, right? The number of times when we break pressure, they're gonna be running with the players. They're not gonna leave them behind. So as Dana makes his run across the field, and as Jet cuts the ball back, it's on for us, right? There's even space in here if we wanted to work the ball around, or we can play a ball directly from here into this space. I think he you know, miss hits it and aren't able to get onto it. But the ideas are right and the space is there for us to attack, as long as you see it next time. Good pressure here wins us the ball back. And what we do, we win it, we switch it. And good ball by Ethan. I see what Dean's trying to do here, trying to drop a ball into the forward, which, you know, if Jack had drawn pressure from here, that would have been a good ball or a little bit more measured ball, I think would have been perfect so that Jack can run onto. Defender is able to, to, to recover behind, but good by Dean to recognize, and you know, he needs to step up as well. As his ball is getting played, he's not able to control it. Let's get into position to try to win this next ball. And a little bit too much dribbling here. I know we're trying to get through, but once you turn backwards like this, to me, again, the principle is to play what you see. Here, here, you know, from Daniel to Jack, Jack to Eric. Or if Daniel can do it himself, to Eric, right? You're facing away from goal. You have, you've just realized you just took on two players, all right? You're not gonna be able to turn back into them and do anything. You probably could have gotten a call there, but you're a bigger kid. You know, you're not probably not gonna get these calls. And a lot of times players aren't gonna, you know, referees aren't gonna give them. Jack does the same thing, right? The mentality gets rub rubs off on everybody, right? We start to dribble too much. But he does a good job here creating space for himself and getting a, a decent shot, probably outside of his his range. Um, but a decent effort. You know, we need more of these from our more of these type of shots from our midfielders uh, from deep positions. But overall, decent play from us. Um, just can be a little bit cleaner in spots and we probably could have gotten through. Uh, here's another uh, good sequence of passing out of the back. Uh, but I'll just let it run. Yep, we're, gonna, we're patient, we'll build out in the back. You know, good ball in here. Probably as we play this ball, you see Jack, uh, Jack, uh, Jake move. This is what Brendan you know, is really good at. I think we can add to our game from the wide backs position is that he doesn't lose the ball because he's, he's deceiving the player, right? He's good, he's quick with this dribbling and he's not able to, you know, he, he doesn't give the ball up easily. Right? He does this often, this little dip move, basically the outside of the in and he's looking to play. Can we do this in one touch? I think we could have. You know, I'm always looking for opportunities where we can limit the number of touches that we take first time, right? It's on for us. Good play though, across the field. Ethan's got his head up, he's looking, nothing's on. Same thing, Dean's, as the ball's coming to him, this is your chance to look for look for something as the ball's rolling. Is a player open, nothing's on. Just go back, right? Be sim Play simple, use the space to our advantage. And I'm not a huge fan of the way that Raphael is receiving this ball with his right foot, but something he will continue to work on. Um, playing with his right foot here is a, it's a tough, ball but he has definitely good interplay here right jets in a good spot we recognize the passing lanes um little one-time ball which you know i'm looking for our, our forwards to do often and our midfielders to run on to um, we get a little bit lucky here with the touches again is jack ready to play in less touches um i'm not sure you know he's he's looking for space players to run off here in the fr in front of him but no one's really moving it's a little bit late by daniel nothing by by uh mike you know, there is a little bit of opportunity here to play Dean. I'm not sure if who's to the left of Daniel, but uh, we get out, we get lucky, we get work the ball to the other side, which is what we're looking to do. Dan and Brendan's looking into the space. Good run by him. Again, a little dip move, and he's by his defender, and a good cross. Would have been a good cross if it didn't get blocked out. We get a corner out of it. And it really is just highlighting, again, working the ball patiently from the back through the midfield, attacking the flanks with, you know, three or four players. In this case, we play a ball into the forward, back to the midfielder, and then we switch a point of attack again. Um, and it's good overall play. End up getting a good cross from our outside back um, that leads to a corner.